Assalamualaikum everyone We are from the group 4 Today we want to present about our topic Kadazan Dusun The member of the the member of our group is Me, Faris Daniel Haizatul Aisyah Nur Shafiqah Siti Nur Fakira Amani Nur Zahirah Nazihah Nurul Naziha, Nur Farah Idina Siti Maisarah Irwan Shahdoh And Muhammad Hafiz As a Kadazan, I often feel like I have only lived a borrowed life of one, merely hearing stories from my parents and of my predecessors. Like the mists of dawn, these stories will one day escape me when I die and never reach the ears of my children. Lucky to be relevant, I feel a sense of responsibility as guardian of my past, present and future. I see my elders holding on to what their elders passed down and so, I know that we owe it to them to continue a legacy. Now we ask of you, hear our stories, the Kadazan Dusun story, through the eyes of a people. To tell a story, we must begin at the start. The natives of Sabah, as told by my forebears, might have come from the Nunuk Ragang, sun and moon, or the earth and clay formed by Kinoingan. To further appreciate the Kadazan Dusun people, we must replay their experience. To know what they eat is one thing, but to understand what these dishes mean and the art of concocting them is another. To enjoy their music is a form of appreciation and encouragement, but to know the names of each gong allows us to completely embrace them. To observe how they raise and love their children gives us a chance to get to know them, but hearing their challenges means an access into their existence. Will these tales and accounts answer anything? Their unceasing efforts to remain as they have always been and to comply with change make them, and hence me, relevant. So, I shall tell their story as they have told it to me. This is a story of my people, the keepers of North Borneo, and those who hold it so dear, in times past and in time to come. Kadazan Dusun are two indigenous people of Sabah which is the ethnic groups Kadazan and Dusun. The Kadazan Dusun is the largest native group of Bumi Putra in Sabah. They are also known as Mamasuk. Kadazan Dusun has been recognized as an indigenous nation of Borneo with documented heritage by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO since 2004. I know I'm to talk about it. Taripan pendekatu tigol man pemolongot. Hmm. Dia di tigol pisungkuan takkan pun menggensok. Menggensok nadi. Dua ni tiga rugu ayam. Asenau lagi nak pepelapat takano. Di nepo ngagi gio, pemagio tak takano. Kagulu gulu, babagan kena pet katin. Gigio ngak kasih liko mati wadik. Pero nakabuot, nandang ko pumulapot ito ka na ba yun ah? Bulugon! Pundo! Hinawa, traditional dishes for the Kadas and the Soy trip in Sabah. The dish is cooked with a fire, made from fresh fish, fields mixed with great bambang seeds, usually served or curtain occasion. Nasi lino point, the rice wrapped in leaf, lopots means to wrap or fold. The leaf that are usually used to wrap rice are punti leaf. To make this rice, the rice used is human rice. This dish is often served during festival occasion, meanwhile in the event of death. 
the Suina pot will be wrapped using tarak leaf. Thank you. Next, we go for the cloth for the Kadazan Dusun culture. For the women, they have their own traditional clothes. They are called Sinwanga and Tapi. Sinwanga and Tapi is uh, known as the traditional garment for Karazan Dusun women. Sinwanga means short shirt and Tapi is a long sarong with gold design along the tie. A Karazan Dusun lady wearing the traditional cast, uh, costume normally emphasize the slimness of their waist is considered as beautiful. For the men for the men of the Kadazan Dusun culture, they have gaun and sova. Gaun is a long sleeve shirt without em bar embroidery. Sova is a black trouser worn with waistband that is to got to got and there's some gold trimming on the seams along the hips for modern trousers. They wear it for ceremonial purpose. Okay, now it's my turn to explain about the Karazan Nusu languages. So, the population is the largest in the state of Sabah. The Karazan Nusu language has 13 distinct dialects spoken by over 300,000 people in the district of Ranau, Tambunan, Penampang, Papar, Tuaran, Kota Belud, and areas outside of Kota Kinabalu. The similarities between the Karazan and Dusun languages are sufficient for speakers of these two languages to understand each other easily. In a nutshell, the most salient distinction between these two languages are the differences in their phonemic charts. The, Kaz the Karazan consists of fricatives V and Z which are absent in Dusun. On the other hand, W, Y and R are present in Dusun but not in Karazan. Okay, that's all for my part. Thank you. Next. The next slide is culture or dance of Kadazan Dusun. The first one is Sumaza Penampan Dance. Sumaza Penampan is a traditional dance of the Kadazan Dusun tribe. This dance is usually performed to welcome the arrival of member Zun, which means the spirit of body. This dance is performed every time after the rice harvest. This dance is also often performed during the harvest festival known as Tanda Kaamatan, which is celebrated on a large scale by the people of Sabah in May every year. The second one is Menangkut Dance. This dance is performed by the Kadazan Dusun of Kota Morugu in Northern Sabah. It is usually danced during weddings and other ceremonies. The song will perform this dance using a plate placed on the palm of the hand. If the plate falls off, it indicates a bad omen, especially when this dance is performed during the wedding day. And the last one is Mogunati dance. Mogunati is a dance performed by indigenous of indigenous people from the interior of Sabah including the Kedazan Dusun people from Tambunan, Kuijan Dusun from Keninga and several group from the Murut tribe. The word Atep is taken by Mogunati which means present between two surfaces. This dance is a dance performed during certain ceremony in honor of guests. Marriage the marriage of Kadazan tribe is based on the parents' agreement, as it is the parents that choose their children's spouses. All ceremonial, management, and expenses during inquiring engagement and marriage are done by the parents. Will be groom or bride only knows the arrangement when the marriage date is getting closer. The Kadazan community only allows a marriage without blood ties. Thus, the parent involvement in identifying their children's life partners is significant in evading such marriage. Non-conformity to custom and community norms is believed inviting ill fate to the couples and their families as well as the community as a whole. In marriages, dowries are prayed to the bride's families and negotiation is arranged between the groom and the bride's families. Once the nopung is agreed, 
upon and all terms of payment settled, a date for the actual wedding day is chosen. It must be auspicious day. The moon calendar plays an important role. Any month is good for the wedding, except March, when the cemeteries are being cleaned and ancestors remembered, and the fasting month of the Malays. As a traditional culture, the dowry is metaphorically late, but the mass stick on a flat surface. Dowries traditionally consisted of water, buffaloes, pigs, sack of rice, and even arms of tapai. Then, fourthly, usually, Malay tradition will start the wedding ceremony at 1, 2, 3, or 4 p.m. or at night. But Kadazan Dusun is different. They will start early in the morning at 8 or 9 a.m. in the morning, and the congregation from the group will approach the house of the bride first. The gong will sound to invite the people who hear them to witness the union. Before the wedding couple enter the house, the Bobo Hizan, which is a ritual specially from the villager elders, will start the ceremony, uh, ceremony which is at the fifth part. Okay. After all customary ceremonies done, the wedding couple will sit in the center of the house and the rice will be served. But this time, the rice must be served from a quali or wok in order that there will be enough rice for the couple to eat. The bride and groom will feed each other a bowl of rice. And according to their taboo tradition, if the groom cannot eat buffaloes in that time, the couple might not be able to have a children. Plus, there are many taboos to be observed on their first night. Lastly, the next day after the wedding, the husband must take the bride to his parents' home until he built his own house. Traditionally, three months after the wedding, the husband must visit his parent-in-law while bringing a pig. They will slaughter ceremonially and eaten by the whole family. Thank you. So now is festival. Festival that celebrate by the Karazan Dusun Ethnic is Harvest Festival or also known as Pesta Kaamatan. This festival is celebrated to give thanks to ancient god and fairy spirit for the bountiful harvesting after the end of harvest season. This festival is celebrated on 30 and 31 May every year. The main activities of this festival is Unduk Ngadaw and Sugandoy. Unduk Ngadaw is a beauty pageant competition that is Taringan Rakyante and Sugandoy is singing competition. There are also other activities such as bodybuilding competition as well as other arts and craft performances handicraft arts and cultural performances. The festival commem commemorating the spirit of the Huminudun Huminodun who have sacrificed her life to stop a prolonged drought. We talk about troubles of Kadazan Dusun. Firstly, uh, birth and pregnant women. Prohibiting whole family from farming on the baby born day and while chanting the umbilical cord. Umbilical cord in Malay is called Tali Pusat. Okay. Uh, then prohibiting from taking the baby out of the house for one week. Next, pregnant woman also forbidden to eat while walking and cannot eat fruit that has been eaten by some animal because it believes that the child will be naughty and arrogant. Then, wife and husband prohibited for nailing because they believe uh, the wife will have difficulty uh, when giving birth. Then, we move to bed, can cook any green vegetable until the ritual of Magukas was performed. Ritual of Magukas, uh, seven days of bed. Okay, during morning, okay, sorry for the spelling error. The correct, uh, the correct spelling is M O U R N I N G. All uh, we call berkabung. All family members are prohibited from cutting nails and hair. Then, widow and widower cannot eat spicy food, flour and basil fish, as well as all uh, as all kind of chickens and salted fish during the morning. Then, uh, engagement. 
then a whole day engagement during the 15th day and the next day of the month. Okay, uh, next, forbidden to use sacred plates, bowls and glasses to serve food. The third one, kind serving all the type of fetus. And the last one, on the day of engagement, the engaged girl cannot leave the house and the couple also forbidden to go out together. Okay, next, the conclusion for Kadazan Dusun. The conversions to Islam and Christianity among the Kadazan Dusun community is clearly influenced by several factors such as historical factors, politi politi political climates, methods of propagation of religion and mixed marriage culture. Historically, the focus of the missionary movement movement in the interior led to the yearly acceptance of members of the Kadazan Dusun community towards Christianity over other religions, especially Islam. It was the group of early individuals who embraced Christianity who were responsible for developing Christian teaching in Kadazan Dusun community. Eventually, they were able to form a modern and dynamic Kadazanusun Christian community in Sabah. Thank you.